Hello everyone, in this video we learn about bond valuation. Bonds are financial securities. So what is a financial security? A financial security is a financial instrument that represents a legal claim against the cash flows and assets of the issuer. So the issuer is required to meet the obligations on the financial security from its cash flows or assets or even both. The issuer of a financial security can be a government, a municipality, a corporation or even an individual. The three important features of a financial security are fungibility, negotiability and monetary value. Fungibility refers to the ability of a good or asset to be interchanged with other goods or assets of the same type. Shares issued by Apple company and listed on two or three different stock exchanges across the world are fungible because whether you buy or sell the share in one market or the other, the share remains the same and can be exchanged. Another good example is money. If you lend your friend a $10 note today and the friend returns another $10 note three days later, it doesn't matter. The money is still $10. A financial security is also negotiable. That means that it can be legally and freely assigned, sold or transferred. This means that the ownership of the financial security from one owner to the other is transferred on delivery. The third and last one is that financial security must have a monetary value. There are three types of financial security, bond, shares or stock and preferred shares. Here we will focus on bonds and we leave shares and preferred stock for another video tutorial. A bond is a financial security that represents a fixed legal claim against the cash flows and assets of the issuer. The claim is fixed because the holder of the bond is entitled to receive periodic interest payment and principal from the issuer. The interest rate received on the bond may be fixed or variable. If it is fixed then it is a fixed rate bond and if it is a variable rate then it will be a variable or floating rate bond. The bond is an IOU between the investor that is the lender and the issuer that is the borrower. Investor purchases the bond and lends the money to the issuer of the bond today and in return the issuer that is the borrower agrees to make fixed periodic interest payments and the principal amount in future. The key features of a bond include the par value, the coupon rate, maturity date, issue date and the yield to maturity of the bond. Par value is also known as face value and this is used to calculate the periodic interest on the bond and this is returned at maturity to the investor. The coupon interest rate is the rate that is used to calculate the interest payment on the bond. Generally, the coupon rate is fixed. However, it can also be floating. If it is fixed, then the bond is a fixed rate bond. If it is floating, then the bond is a floating rate bond. The maturity date is the year when the bond will be redeemed. That is when the par value of the bond will be returned back to the investor. The issue date is the date the bond is issued. Yield to maturity is also known as the promise yield and it is the IRR that is the internal rate of return on the bond provided the investor keeps the investment in the bond till its maturity. For valuation of bond we follow the rule in finance that states that the value of any asset or investment is equal to the present value of all its future cash flows. There are three important things here that we need to know. First, we need to know the cash flows from the investment or the asset. Second, we need to know the timings of those cash flows. And third, we need to know the required rate of return or the discount rate to discount those future cash flows. This is stated here in this mathematical representation where we are saying that the value of asset A is equal to the present value of all its future cash flows discounted at the required rate of return which is denoted here by R. For valuation of bond, the 
cash flows are of two types. First, there are periodic regular interest payments and then there is the final payment of the par value to the investor. So if we know the timings of these interest and par value payments and we know the required rate of return that is the discount rate, we simply have to discount these interest payments and par value back to the present value and that will give us the value of the bond if we sum them all. Before we do bond valuation, it is important to understand the relationship between coupon rate and market rate also known as the YTM or the yield to maturity. Bond prices are inversely related to market interest rate. We know that the coupon rate for fixed rate bond will remain the same. So the inverse relationship between bond prices and market interest rate means if market interest rates go up bond prices will go down and if market interest rates go down bond prices will go up. The coupon rate remains fixed for fixed rate bond. However, the market interest rate, which is also the opportunity cost in the market, will keep on changing. As a result, there are possibilities that YTM may be equal to or greater than or less than the coupon rate. If the YTM is equal to the coupon rate, then the market price of the bond will be equal to the par value of the bond and the bond will be said to be selling at par. If the YTM is greater than the coupon rate, then the bond price in the market will be less than the par value of the bond and it will be said to be trading at a discount. If the YTM is less than the coupon rate, then the market price will be greater than the par value which will be meaning that the bond is selling at premium. Here we have an example where the coupon rate is equal to the market rate that is 10%. The bond has a 5 year maturity and it has a par value equal to 1000. We know that this bond should be selling at par value because the coupon rate is equal to the market rate. We can prove this numerically. We already know that the value of the bond should be equal to the present value of all its future cash flows. In this case we have interest payments on the bond and the par value of the bond. The interest payment on the bond can be calculated as the coupon rate 10% multiplied into the par value $1000 that is $100. So for 5 years each year there is $100 interest payment and then a par value of $1000 will also be paid at the end of the 5 years. So if we calculate the present value of these cash flows then we can sum them and calculate the value of the bond which should be equal to the par value in this case. The bond will the bond pays hundred dollar in year one, hundred dollars in year two, hundred dollars in year three, hundred dollars in year four and hundred dollars in year five as interest payments and then it also pays one thousand dollars as par value return to the investor. To calculate the bond value we simply have to discount cash flows from the bond at the market rate which is 10% in this case. Alternatively you can write this expression of cash flow like this. Simply you are taking this denominator here up to the hundred dollar which will make this minus one minus two minus three minus four minus five and minus five. I find this arrangement quite useful because it is helping me in reducing the number of calculations I need. So if I get this first discount factor here which is 1 divided by 1.1 I don't need to actually do it every time. The second time I want to get this second discount factor here I simply divide this by 1.1 get this discount factor here. To get the third discount factor here I simply divide this by 1.1 and to get this one I simply divide this by 1.1 and then to get this final one I divide this by 1.1. So in a way it reduces the number of steps involved in the calculation of the discount factors. To calculate the value of the bond we simply multiply each cash flow by its corresponding discount factor. This gives us the present value of that cash flow and if we add all these present values of cash flows we get the value of the bond. 
in this case it is equal to one thousand dollars which is exactly the par value of the bond and we can see that as the coupon rate is equal to the market rate the price or the value of the bond is equal to the par value of the bond if we look at the pattern of the cash flows from the bond we see that this payment of $100 is an annuity for five years and then we have a single discrete cash flow which is the par value of the bond. So there are two types of cash flows here. One is an annuity of $100 that is the periodic interest payment and then there is a discrete single cash flow of $1,000 that is the par value. So we can calculate the present value of the $100 annuity using an annuity based formula and then we can calculate the present value of this single discrete cash flow using a discrete discounting formula. The bond valuation formula here contains two elements. The first element gives us the present value of the annuity of interest payments of $100 and the second element gives us the present value of the par value that will be received at maturity. This term here is actually calculating us the present value discount factor of an annuity for a rate R and time equal to N years. If I take this denominator up to the par value, the sign of N will become negative and that's what I prefer to use. So you see here, I have the par value multiplied into 1 plus the rate raised to the power minus N because this gives me ease in computations. Continuing with our example, the annuity is a $100 interest payment paid each year for 5 years. So the present value annuity factor at 10% for 5 years is 3.790. If we multiply this by 100, we get the present value of the annuity. In this case, it will be equal to $379. The present value of the 1000 par value at 10% in 5 years time is equal to 1000 multiplied into 0.621 and that gives us 621. 621 plus 379 is equal to the value of the bond that is $1,000. To value a bond that pays semi-annual coupon, we need to adjust the formula. So we divide the interest paid on the bond by two, we divide the market rate by two everywhere in the formula, we multiply N by two everywhere in the formula. Continuing with the example that we are doing, we divide 100 by 2 to get 50 here, we divide 10 by 2 to get 5% here and we multiply 5 by 2 to get 10 here and 10 here. If we solve this, we get the value of the bond still equal to $1000 because the coupon rate is still equal to the YTM that is 10%. The second example is of a bond that is selling at a discount and this will occur when interest rates in the market are more than the coupon rate. The coupon rate offered by the issuer on the security is 10%. The market required return is 12%. Investors in the market would want to earn the same rate of return as the market rate. In order for them to earn the same rate, the bond must be selling at a price sufficiently less than par value of the bond so that their rate of return is equal to 12% even though they are receiving 10% coupon which is less than 12% they are benefited by buying the bond at less than the par value using 12% as the discount rate in our formula for bond valuation we calculate the present value discount factor for a 12% 5 year annuity equal to 3.605. We multiply this by 100 to get the present value of the interest payments annuity and then we also get the present value of the $1000 par value. If we add these two cash flows we get $927.5 as the value of the bond. The bond is selling at a discount from par value which is equal to 1000 minus 927.5 that is 72.5. This 72.5 is contributing towards 
the return of the investor and though the coupon rate is 10 percent the investor will still be able to earn 12 percent due to the 72.5 discount that he or she receives on buying the bond from below the par value price the third example is of a bond that is selling at premium and this happens when the coupon rate on the bond is more than the market interest rate in our case here we are having a 10 percent annual coupon bond where the market interest rate is eight percent the bond has five years to maturity and has a par value of 1000 using the eight percent market rate as the discount rate we calculate the present value annuity factor for the interest payments which is equal to 3.993 here and also the discrete cash flow of 1000 which is 0 0.681 here multiplying these cash flows by their corresponding discount factors gives us the present value of each and we aid them to get the value of the bond equal to $1,080.3. Here, the bond is selling at a premium of $80.3 from the par value. This extra $80.3 paid by the investor results in his return dropping from 10% to 8%. So, though he receives 10% coupon rate, effectively, his return is 8%. And the reason for that is that he has not purchased the bond for 1000 but for $1,080.3. So effectively, the rate of return for the investor is 8%. This is what the market return is. Irrespective whether a bond is issued at premium or at a discount, as maturity approaches, it will converge toward its par value, keeping other things constant and at maturity the bond will always be trading at par value in the next video tutorial we will learn how to calculate the yield to maturity for a bond